And when we say he found, he unpacks, he unloaded, he unfolded the scriptures, not only reading them, but explaining them in a fashion, amen, by which the disciples could understand. Our elders are not honored. In some places, in some cases, they actually abused. The increase of the baby boom was entering into that age of, of, of season, of the season life. We have whole home health companies, nursing homes. What the elderly are being taken advantage of. I remember when I was practicing as an assistant DA. They brought us to classes out of town because elderly abuse was running rampant around the country. People was going into their houses, stealing their stuff, getting checkbooks and credit cards. and You know what I'm saying? And they, they would do, that's the ultimate sense of dishonor. And it gets worse than that. Even being mean to them, why them people paying you? Even putting your hands on them and hitting them. I saw some cases of them beating older gentlemen and, and older women in the nursing homes. Look, black eyes and stuff like that. Like, Mom, what happened to you? You know? It's dishonor, man, and that's the, the time we're living in. Our society is thrown. It's dysfunctional, man. I'm going to tell you what has happened. We no longer honor in the elderly. We honor, honor in the young we are, we are youth-driven society. Anytime somebody 15, 16, they, they youth, high school, graduating, they, they walk in and all eyes on them, you know? Of course she's going to look like that. She just finished being 12. You understand what I'm saying? You know, she ain't had three children. You understand what I'm saying? But we all honor them, want to hear what they say when they know absolutely nothing. We honor in them, and they're the most unwise. We honor in them, and they're the most foolish. Yes. Going to them, the youth, just because they know how to act or shoot a basketball, asking them how marriage should be. Should we accept homosexual marriage? You just made it to the NFL. Do you know? You don't know. You just know how to run and catch. <laughs> but we honor them and give them a platform. When the people who really know, sitting down there quiet, with all the wisdom and the knowledge and the know-how, 50 years, civil rights movement, Vietnam War, World War II, done been through it all, and we just sit there, not asking them. You see? It's the, it's, I'm telling you, man, it's the height of foolishness. And our society is so bad is that we have placed upon uh, uh, every individual that somehow getting older is the enemy. Somehow like life is over when we age. That's why you got some women, they 80, they 85, they, 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 the hair is jet black like they 17. <laughs> they dressing like they 20. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, home girl. Listen, it's gone. It's been gone. It's over. You got to find something else to find your reason, your purpose, your value in. You know? Come on, man. But it's the world we living in. We got the Ponce de Leon syndrome. We looking for the fountain of youth and everything. We looking to live forever. Learn how to thrive in every season. When you're young, thrive in being young. When you're middle-aged, thrive in being middle-aged. When you're older and you're in the season, thrive in that season. Just because society jacked up, messed up, thrown, don't mean we got to be thrown as well. Instead of dying that hair when it's, listen, and I'm not, nothing wrong with dying your hair. You know what I'm saying? You gray head and you're 25, go ahead and put you some uh, dark and lovely in there, whatever that is. Ain't nothing wrong with no just for men. But there comes a time when you're just going to have to let it go. Let it go. Because what you're running from, Proverbs actually says that the gray head, that the gray head is, is, is glory. Look, the hoary head, the gray head is a crown of glory. Especially if it be found in the way of righteousness. When you find somebody older that's serving God, 
saved under the blood of Jesus. Not their own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. And listen, man. Whew, these are people that we can learn from, benefit from, be blessed by. There is a generational mix-up. Instead of the older women discipling the younger women, instead of the older men discipling the younger men, it's flip-flop. The younger discipling the older. When the younger have nothing to give. The older is the one. And what I want to see in Philadelphia is a passing down. Is legacy. You see? His legacy. And, and, and I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm in my 30s and stuff like that still, but, but my mind goes to legacy. What can I pass down? What anointings, what gifts, what callings that I have within me that I can actually invest in the next generation? You see what I'm saying? But we allowing our elderly to die uninvested with knowledge and wisdom and gifts and you see is that making any sense here we we gotta we gotta honor them now in the church is no different it's no different you you let a young couple come in church a young man a young woman and the church is a buzz boy Oh, you saw that new couple, that new? We're going to ask them over to dinner. We're going to invite them over. We're going to talk to them. Hey, man, you in the 12? Hey, man, what church you come from, man? Hey, you want to go to men's meeting? Hey, we playing softball, man. You want to be a part of the softball team? Listen, the church is alive when the young come in. I wonder. I wonder, Philadelphia, if we act the same way when an elderly gentleman come through those doors. Somebody that's in their 60s or 70s. Somebody that might be in their 80s. They want the word of God too. They hungry for the presence of God. I wonder, Philadelphia, if when they come in and pastors say, go shake somebody's hand or go hug somebody, how many hugs they get? How many invites they get? How many people saying, listen, are oh, you in a 12? Because they still need a 12. I'm asking you, Philadelphia, are we partial? Just like our society that we live in, us, to the young. I'm wondering, Philadelphia, if we got elderly people sitting in here who have never been touched with our love, never been spoken to, as though somehow, just because they're gray-headed, they don't need fellowship, they don't need love, they don't need compassion, they don't need a word. I want to tell you, Philadelphia, these folk need a word too and may even need a word more, may even need a hug more. I'm pouring my heart out to you tonight, man. Man, I listen, listen, listen. Come on, man. Let me pastor you here for a second. We want to be a church for everybody, man. Every age thriving. That's how you have a healthy church, man. A booming Titus ministry, a booming youth ministry, a booming marriage ministry. Nobody feel left out. Come on, give God some glory for that. Yes, 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 our elders, man. You know, we got to learn how to honor them. And we honor them, y'all. Because they made in the image of God, just like us. Whatever God has God's image on it, we got to honor, man. We honor them because, listen, if you know anything about God, God is seasoned as well. They call him the ancient of days. He, he's not only the alpha, he is the omega. You understand what I'm saying? And this culture of not valuing the aged is a plot of the enemy. To not value that which is timeless, which is founded in antiquity. To not value the old past, the old landmarks, the old, a hey, God, ways of doing things. Not the ways that was unbiblical, but the ways that were biblical. So we live in a society that says everything that was old and antiquated is not right. 
The way they viewed marriage is not right. The way that we viewed homosexuality is not right. The way we viewed uh, uh, commitment and fidelity is not right. The way we did school is not right. And the further we get back from whence we came, the worse we get. And I wonder if that's just a plot of the enemy. Because see, our God, the Bible says, he changed it not. The world may wax old like a garment, but thou, O oh God, will never get old. Thou change it not. He is immutable. So what if the devil can get us to say everything that's old and getting older is bad, is wrong, and only things that's new and young is right? Thence this anathema to the word of God. This anathema to the things of God. The old church preaching. You know? We live in a society that's thrilled, man. Because it's leaving God. I say to God, listen, they ask some seasoned saints in a church, how would you like the younger generations to honor you? They asked them. What would you like them to do and how would you like them to treat you? And let me give you the answers to that. Number one, be patient when we are slow. If we're moving slow, be patient. Be patient. If we're talking slow, don't finish our sentences for us. We know what we want to say. <laughs> Just wait. It's the fruit of the Spirit, long-suffering. <laughs> Secondly, Listen to our advice, youngsters. Don't mean you have to take it, but just listen. Some of them ancients, man, listen, the elders, they've been living twice the amount of life you've been living on the planet. Twice. You third, they've been here two of your lifetimes. You don't think that they can add to your knowledge base at all? Not only listen to their advice, but listen to their stories. Stories about where they've been, the way things were. Man, me and my little wife, oh, man, we love to just go chill. We love to chill with, with people that's older than us. We love that. You know why? Because they have depth of character. They have a story to tell. I want to know everywhere you've been. I want, to, I want to be that in Europe with you, in the tank. I want to be that too. Because in that, I can learn some things. Everybody want to watch Lifetime. It's based on a true story. But that's some actors. Why not talk to the people who was actually really there, and it's a really true story. They were there at Selma. They were there in the Freedom Rise. They were there in Vietnam. They were there. Listen to their stories. If you don't know where you come from, you can't really know where you're going. You with me so far? So honor them by listening to their stories. They say, honor us, this is the elderly talking, honor us by, oh, come on here. Where's my hand? My hand right, boy, I'm telling you. Here it is, all right, all right. By giving a little time to us. That'll address that loneliness. A lot of them have lost so many people. They by themselves over there in them houses. All them nursing homes. That's why what Ronnie P. do and the rest of the teachers that go out there, Mike Bonnet and Parker and all of them, going to the nursing homes, that's honoring the elderly. And those that honor them, God's going to honor. Listen to me good. I started ministering at about six years old. Ms. Rose, who attend Sundays, amen, she would take me where to begin ministering and praying and laying hands on the sick. Even back then when I was six, she would take me to the nursing home. And we would minister. We would pray. We would, that's, that's where ministry started for me, you know. And I wonder, man, if God ain't blessed me all these years because I honored the elderly. You understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> Woo! Give a little time to them, man. They say, if you see us coming, hold the door open and just don't let it hit us. 
mess around, break a hip, a shoulder, or something like that. Have some decency. You see? More ahead on Expounding Truth Ministries with Pastor Omar Tebow. Well, Pastor, how do we honor our spiritual elders? I'm so happy you asked. You honor them through the way you talk to them, communication. I believe that you shouldn't talk to your pastor any kind of way. This is Pastor Omar Tebow bringing you one of many updates on the Phase 2 project. Just wanted to kind of show you what we have going on and I want you to remember that none of this would be possible without you. Over here is where we're going to have a bunch of our classrooms uh, for PCA. If you look in the corner over here, this will be where the youth are going to worship and praise the Lord. Uh, over in this area, we'll have our, our kids department. We're going to have some things for the tweens and also for our nursery and toddlers. And of course, we're going to have the gym over here. Hold the door open and just don't let it hit us. <laughs> Mess around, break a hip, a shoulder, or something like that. Have some decency. You see? But at the same time, don't treat them like babies. You know, because they could do some things by themselves. I, I love this questionnaire that they filled out. You know, this real life elderly people asking about how we could honor them. Come on, give God some glory for that. All right, so we show honor to our parents. We show honor to our elders. And I want to deal with this one before we go. We show honor to spiritual elders as well. Spiritual elders as well. When I say spiritual elders, amen, I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about first ladies and, and, uh, because they're elders in the church as well. I'm talking about ministers. Uh, like uh, uh, Brother Duck and, and uh, uh, Brother Ant and Brother Phil. I'm talking about deacons, amen, like our deacons elect that's coming up and, and even Deacon Cardell. There is a certain honor that attaches with uh, the offices of the church, you see. Uh, in Philadelphia, if you are new to Christianity, that's not something that you're going to know. That's not something you're going to know. So... As I talk about this, this may be new territory for you, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. You with me so far? You have to learn how to show your spiritual elders honor. Now, I'm going to try my best not to talk about it from my perspective, you honoring me. I'm going to just talk about pastors need to be honored, all right? I'm going to try my best. I ain't nobody want to, I, I don't feel right doing that, all right? So the Bible says in, in 1 Timothy 5 and, and 17, it tells us, it says, let the elders that rule well be counted of what? Of double honor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm kind of read it too fast. Thank you, Miss Shirley. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Of double honor. Especially those they who labor in the word and doctrine. So that's the spiritual uh, principle. Um, you got to honor those, those elders that, that, that rule well. Now, what this is saying is, is that if you got a good spiritual leader, if you got a good pastor, you should honor that pastor. You should honor the ministers. You should honor the first lady. You should honor the deacons. If you, if you got one. If you got one. He says the honor is supposed to be so good that it, it's not just honor. It's double honor. It's almost like twice as much. 
It's like you had McDonald's, you say, can you put some cheese on that? You see? And that's just the way it is. You know, if you know anything about the pastorate, you know, that office, amen, I just remember myself being under Pastor Dale or, or Pastor Sam at the open door. That office can do you so much good in life. It can do you so much good. My pastors coming up, man, they raised me up. They blessed me. The knowledge bless my marriage, man. Bless my businesses, man. Just bless me so much. Now, if somebody going to bless you so much like that, shouldn't you be a blessing too? Shouldn't you honor them as well? Y'all with me so far? I got three claps in that. That's good. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, retail. Then he says, especially those that do what? That labor in the word. That phrase labor in the word means that they continually study, read, search the scriptures so that they can bring meat to you so that you can eat the word of God and not be malnourished. Have a word in due season. Come to church and hear from God. He said those that labor in the word. He said, listen, you got to honor your spiritual elders. You see? Well, pastor... How do we honor our spiritual elders? I'm so happy you asked. <laughs> you honor them through the way you talk to them, communication. I believe that you shouldn't talk to your pastor any kind of way. I remember, man, one, 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 one Sunday, man, I believe it was a Sunday, I was in church. And, man, dude ran up on my pastor, man. Started talking to my pastor rough. And we was about to leave. So I told my wife, I said, babe, hold on. I feel like I need to stay. This dude is handling my pastor a little rough. So they talking like that, going back and forth. So I walk up. I say, uh. I said, Pastor Dell, you need me to stay for something? Because you just, you're just not going to do that. This man is pouring into my life. He taught me how to teach the Bible. You're not going to do that time, man. You know? And after I said that, I don't know if it was the way I was standing, cracking my knuckles, or whatever I was doing. <laughs> it, the conversation broke up. You know? I, listen, especially if you listen and you go to another church, don't talk to your pastor any kind of way. Don't get rude with him. Don't get ugly with him. You know what I'm saying? That's a position of authority. The Bible tells you, he, he worthy of honor and, and double honor. You know, I understand the way you talk to your mom and your dad. That's the root of the problem. Because you don't know, you, and you haven't been fathered. You haven't been mothered. So you don't know how to really get down with that. So you talk any kind of way because that's how you talk to your mama. But I believe in church, amen, we can teach people who were fathered and mothered wrongly, amen, how to be sons and daughters, how to, how to, how to, you didn't learn at home, but we can teach you honor in the spiritual set, you know, and undo everything the devil uh, did in your life growing up, you see? Not only that, uh, let me give you something that's a pet peeve in my heart. I really don't like when churches don't call they pastor the past. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm not dealing with it in regards to me. I'm just talking about churches. You know, they walk up there, hey, Chris, hey, John. I don't like that. Coming up, I ain't never called my pastor by his first name without saying pastor such and such. You know why? For honor, for respect. You with me so far? We got Christians that respect their doctor more than their pastor. Because you would never go to your doctor office and call him Brian. You would never call him that. You walk up in there and you say, Dr. Levine. You say, Dr. This, Dr. That. So why you going to come to church and call your pastor Chris? Why are you going to call him John? Why? Because your doctor more important than your pastor? Your doctor who keeping your body alive or your pastor who keeping your soul alive and saved and going to eternal life. So, so heavy, I'm just saying, I'm not talking about feeling them. I'm just saying. And we living in a day, a society of dishonor. Listen, it's 
common not to call them pastor. Even the ones you see on TV, they'll say Charles Stanley. They'll say this, that, David Jeremiah. They won't even call them pastor. It got to the point to where some of them rather be called doctor than pastor. And that's when you lose the scriptural significance of the position that we hold. Because there is no doctorate, no PhD, no JD that's as heavy as that name, pastor. You with me so far? That's, that's man, that's, that's deep, man. You know, we live in a society of dishonor. You know? I want to call them boys past. Now, Philly, Philly don't rule like that. I don't have no problem with y'all. Listen, that's why I say I am blessed to be over this church. I'm absolutely blessed. Let me give you a couple of examples. We was in the prisons at Dixon, and they told us that it might not be good that everybody in the prison would know I was the pastor. Because usually the pastors don't go out there with the general population, but I like to rub elbows. I like to go out there, and I like to be in there, you know what I'm saying, sitting on their bed with them, talking to them. I want to witness. I want to play softball and everything. I want to do it. And so they said, well, okay, just don't, don't, y'all don't call him pastor. Don't call him pastor while he out here. Them boys had a problem with that. The men of Philadelphia struggled with calling me Omar. They struggled with calling me my first name. They, would, they, uh, uh, they just gave up. By, by the end of the ball game, every, all of them knew I was the pastor. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> by the end of the ball game, everybody knew. They struggled with it. And I, and I praise God for the honor that you showed me. I praise God for that. I'm the, I'm the most blessed pastor in the United States. I really am. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They had one brother, man. They had one brother. He, uh, we was working something out. So he couldn't, he couldn't divulge that I was the pastor. You know, I, I, I had asked him to keep, you know, keep it cool. And, uh, and I called him while it was going on. And so he said, what's up, brother? That's what he said, you know. And uh, so I just keep talking because I am y'all brother. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. And, uh, and so, man, so we hung up the phone. He, 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 he met me. And he, he, he come up to me and he say, he say, I'm so sorry, Pastor. I say, for what, man? He said, man, I didn't call you pastor, man. I, 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 man, I'm sorry for that, man. I didn't mean no disrespect. And, and, and it, just, it just touched me so deep, man. You know? And the brother was actually only doing what I asked him to do, just to keep it down, you know? And that's just two examples. I'm telling you, I'm blessed over here. I'm blessed over here. You know what I'm saying? All right, let me give you some others. We got to finish this third point, y'all, so just give me a Honor your spiritual elders. Let me show you another. Uh, go back to 17. Now, if you do, 